and welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me today is Nicole Ellis. Ooh, hello. Hello, and Cortland Winsett. See, she does that stuff on purpose. It was totally a signal to me, just letting me know who's boss. Like, uh, you know what? You're getting bumped. I'm going to put Nicole in your spot. <laughs> well, it's because we finally have more women in here than men. <laughs> Woohoo! That Girl is power. True. That is true. Yep. Cam is not with us today. We are so sad, but we are going to try and survive this episode. And uh, it's going to be a fun one. Yeah, I'm excited. So we are in November and uh, Nicole brought up this topic called financial fasting. And so I started thinking, okay, when... What on earth is that? That sounds like some <laughs> nonsense. It sounds a little crazy. And so I started thinking, okay, when's the best place to put this into our show? And it's kind of one of those, okay, November. You think about it, you just finished Halloween, where you probably have been binging on candy. And so you're kind of prepping for what's coming up, the holiday seasons. Now, I know trees are already everywhere, which I saw on my Facebook that I had a post from like a couple of years ago where I was ranting about people needing to calm down because the Grinch of me was coming out of like, let Thanksgiving have a holiday. Yes. Well, I think I've probably been off on a rant about that before. <laughs> Thanksgiving deniers are just... Yeah. Well, you're sitting in a room with one because yeah. I'm putting up my tree as soon as possible. Oh, goodness. But so fasting, when people first hear the word fasting, they think of a form of diet and just kind of prepping and, you know, cleansing, getting ready for something. So... I thought, okay, let's do this in November because we're kind of the in-between, or we should be in the in-between. We just finished eating all the Halloween candy, and we're waiting till the turkey is going to be here soon, and then you've got the holiday parties, and that's all the yummy goodness at that point. But um, before we get into, I just thought, but um, that was like Robin but, um, from <laughs> How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be our list, and we'll go through this kind of fast. The craziest diets ever created. Hold on, I'm going to let you read that disclaimer, uh, Court. Okay, legal disclaimer. Yes. It is important to note that these diets are not recommended by medical professionals. They are often ineffective and can be dangerous. If you are considering trying a diet, it is important to talk to your doctor first. <laughs> You did a great job. <laughs> you I feel could, like I just watched a television commercial. Yeah, I feel like you could moonlight for that. Okay, so here are our list of the craziest diets ever. So, Nicole, start us off. The first one on the list is the cotton ball diet, mm -hmm. which involves eating cotton ball soaked in juice or s almost said soap. <laughs> soup. Soup. Well, soap would make it, it go down easier. It'd be slippery. It would burn. Mm. Ew. I, it's that, very dangerous and unhealthy. Yeah, it's not a good idea. So let's, just eating cotton balls? Yeah. Just, that's, that's just nasty. It makes me think of Elf when he's like shoving the cotton balls in his mouth. Yeah. Mm, nope. He just keeps eating them. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's insane. Okay, next one, Court. Mm, next one is the baby food diet. This diet involves eating only baby food, as the name might suggest. I mean, I can't imagine that. The, I mean, everything's like pureed. Yeah, and... You're probably not getting like your full, the, the full nutrition that an adult person needs if they're on a baby food diet. I, I, it's just if crazy. I had to eat mushed up turkey right now, I think I'd rather just gain weight. Mm. Yeah. No, I need the crunch, need the biting, <laughs> the biting. <laughs> Okay, the next one, the master cleanse. This diet involves drinking a mixture of lemon juice, maple syrup, and cayenne pepper for several days. It's a very restrictive diet that can lead to dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. Yeah, what I they're not saying remember is, that. It, it sounds like this diet probably sends you into a, a particular form of... Like starvation mode, for yeah, sure, just, and... Horrible. I, yeah, just uh, everything's burning. It's, I, not, it's not good. You're also grumpy. Oh, yeah. I would I would I mean, be a very angry person. I mean, all of these so far, you're super grumpy. Okay, what's the next one? The next one is the snake diet, which actually does not involve eating snakes. Okay. It, it involves fasting for several days at a time, followed by a period of eating. It's very restrictive and can lead to malnutrition and weight loss that is not sustainable. Don't snake diet. Fasting for several days at a time, followed by a period of eating. Like... That's like sounds like binging yeah. to me. Yeah, binging. They don't suggest any purging in there. But. I guess they call it a snake because like snakes are like so, so skinny, but then you can see them like bulge up when they eat like a whole rodent. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't, I don't, know. Know. I don't want to be a rodent. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Sleeping Beauty diet. Okay, so oh my god, I, I can get behind this one. I guess you know this one. This one involves taking sedatives, so the, so that you can just sleep. And <laughs> if you sleep, you know, then you're not hungry because you just sleep through it. That's fine. 
that, right? Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so yeah, you're you're sleeping all the time and you're getting skinny because you're not eating. But what are you missing out on? Like uh, work, your Sunlight. family. Yeah, so, yeah, you're gonna have no vitamin D because you're not outside. Like you're gonna turn into the sleeping diet's gonna turn into the vampire diet, mm. and you're gonna start sucking blood. Like I mean, I don't know. Okay. Weird. My word. Which then goes the sunlight only diet. This diet involves only getting nutrients from sunlight. What? That's in, what you making these up. Who, this is this excuse is, me. Why are you these, looking at me for this? this? I didn't make these up. Okay, so after you do the Sleeping Beauty diet and you become a vampire and you don't have any sunlight, now you do the sunlight diet and get all the sunlight. Then you're gonna get third degree burns and you're gonna like well like a raisin the, or something. Remember like remember the tan mom? Yeah, that's what you'll turn into. There's no, like, no moisture in your body. No. Next on the list is the tapeworm diet. Ugh. People intentionally ingest tapeworms thinking that the parasites will consume the calories from the food they eat. Um, did you watch the latest American Horror Stories on Hulu? I haven't seen it, but I know there's an episode about it. It's a model. At first, she gets on something like Ozempic. It's not called that, obviously. Mm. But then that doesn't work. So a doctor gives her a tapeworm, and it grows like to the exact length of her body and like eats her. That sounds But awful. she got on the cover of Vogue. That's terrible. It blows my mind that there are people out there that are desperate enough to lose weight that they would do something like that. <laughs> Read this next one. This is perfect for court to the, say. <laughs> the OMG diet. This diet involves taking cold baths and drinking coffee to lose weight. Uh, it is ineffective and an unhealthy diet that can lead to hypothermia and other health problems. So you just sitting in a cold bath drinking a coffee? Yeah. What? It's just silly. Okay, the last one, the air diet. Some people claim to follow the air diet by pretending to eat food while only taking in the aromas and not consuming actual calories. This is not a sustainable or healthy approach. I've heard about I that. I love these comments. Like, duh. duh. I mean, you're just... <laughs> it's a disclaimer. Oh, I'm eating a burger. Mm. Like, what? Or like the people who like put it in their mouth and taste it and then like Ugh. spit it out? Gross. Okay. Sorry. This has been super random. Crazy gross. diets. Yeah. Gross. But so that is our crazy fad diet list. Again, remember court's disclaimer. We are not on Bullcast recommending you do any of these. And the thing is, there's probably a laundry list of like 50 more crazy ones like that. And I mean, I guess the way we went through the diets and just exactly how ridiculous those diets are, you might think that we're going to be all against financial fasting, too. But no, it's it's an interesting concept. And an, I'll be honest, I'd never heard of it before. Mm. But I think the thing is, is that there's, as you've known from these 170 whatever plus episodes we've done so far, there's a lot of different things that it's all kind of the same basic guidelines. But every so often they'll get a new name, they'll get a new spin. And so this, I think, is a new push is financial fasting. So what is it? It's the practice of abstaining from spending money for a set period, typically 21 to 40 days. It's a way to reset your relationship with money, break bad spending habits, and develop a more mindful approach to your finances. See, any approach to eliminating bad behavior or minimizing habitual behavior, anything that part of the approach is that you end up, the, the, the end result is that you are more mindful about uh -huh. what it is you're doing. I think it, it ha that has some positive aspects to it. People will fast from caffeine. People will quit smoking, you know, quit trying to drink as much. So this is, this is an interesting concept. So abstain from spending money for a set period of time. So the benefits of it is pay down debt faster, mm -hmm. break the cycle of senseless spending, align your purchase decisions with your values, and create a space to reconnect in our relationships. So I know somebody in our office a while ago did something like this, and I had so many questions, and it was before I'd even heard of financial fasting. And when they say abstain from spending, this doesn't mean you don't pay your mortgage or your light bill or your water bill. What this is mainly talking about is all the extra stuff. So if you every morning get Starbucks or you do DoorDash or you, uh, yeah, I know. I see you looking at me. Yeah, Nicole. Katie, 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 you've got a problem. Um, this we, is we're doing a an whole episode about that. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, but it's, it's more of looking at spending in the everyday stuff and not the cost that you need to spend to live. 
and to make sure your family is taken care of. So how do we do this? How do we start fasting financially? Mm. Because, yeah, you know, we talked about from the front end the food aspect of it, but it's also the spending. You just spend a bunch of money probably on Halloween costumes and Halloween candy. And if you're like some households, you bought Halloween candy two weeks before Halloween, and then you had to go buy it again because people in your house started eating it. I'm surprised. We didn't seem to, it didn't seem like we, as an office, went through as much candy as we did in the past. I felt like maybe who who is gone that was our candy eater. I don't know. <laughs> We've got like three bags in the pantry of candy. So oh. we'll be eating Reese's hmm. for a while. The end of the year. But so like you just spent that money and then Thanksgiving isn't a big expenditure holiday. It's more of like, hey, you chip in toward the meal or maybe you buy stuff to make it or you maybe have to travel. But the big expense then is coming up with Christmas because all the holidays and buying presents for people. So this is kind of an interesting time to think about, like, how can you reset and end this year on a positive note? So set your goals. What do you hope to achieve with your financial fast? Do you want to save money? Do you want to pay off debt? Or simply become more aware of your spending habits? And so many times I have people come in and I'll do a cash flow analysis for them. Mm -hmm. And they think that their money's all going towards, you know, Amazon, or they think that it's, you know, DoorDash or something like that. But I'm able to then go in there and be like, you know what, it's actually all your subscription services, or it's every day you stop at the gas station. And I know that you're spending like six bucks every day. That's not gas. Mm -hmm. So that's probably like you got a soft drink and maybe a breakfast bar or something. And so that adds up. And so I'd be interested to see what this kind of hey, you know, what are you spending all your money on? And this kind of helps you see, and it'd be interesting. But it's like, how do you stop yourself from spending money? Okay, so what are your goals? First of all, is this is this something that you, you actually think you would benefit from? What is it you're trying to accomplish by fasting? And after you've figured that out, that might, to a certain degree, kind of help you define the next step, which is determining the period of time mm-hmm. that you are going to fast. How long are you going to fast? So if you're trying to re- define your relationship with money and spending and shopping or something like that, then you may want a period of time that's a little bit more extensive because it'll just take you that long to sort of uh, catalog all the different ways that you've been spending your money. Well, Um, with every goal and everything you do, you want to be very specific about it and make sure it's measurable. And mm -hmm. so what's the goal? Now, how long are you going to do it? So just like physical fasting, financial fasting is a muscle. Begin by cutting out expenses that are easy to track. Once you've mastered those smaller targets, then you can take a stab in an entire day without spending and ultimately even an entire week. So that is talking about tapering. What most people fail at with diets, with anything, is you just go cold turkey. I'm never, you know, if court was to say, I'm not going to drink a Diet Coke again. I'm going to go 40 days without it. I did that once. How long I, did you go? I actually went over a year without any Diet Coke. And without did you any cold soda, turkey it? Just, yeah, yeah. But um, Where does that expression come from? I don't know. I don't know. That's a tangent. But Sorry, yep, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's not necessarily advisable, but I tend to be one of those people where I'm, I'm kind of all or nothing. If you want me to do something, then I kind of throw myself all in, whether it's getting in shape or... Uh, Quitting drinking or quitting drinking Diet Coke or, you know. Well, not everybody's you. Yeah. I'm I'm more of a taper off. What about you, Nicole? Um, I quit cold turkey sweet tea once. I was like, I'm just going to stop. And I think I did it fine. I mean, I can, if I set my mind to it and I want to quit, I'll just do it. Okay. I'm thinking of y'all's mental health then, because if <laughs> I cold turkey something, then everyone's going to suffer because I'll probably well, be in a bad mood. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you that there are habits that, that were far more difficult for me to quit cold turkey. And obviously, I don't necessarily recommend it. Uh, It can actually be, you can have negative consequences if you just give up certain things, cold turkey, withdrawal symptoms, you know, all sorts of stuff. So we're talking about money, though. Yeah. So, so, okay, let's say I set a goal that I want to be able to save a little bit more money. So I'm going to start off with what do I feel like is my frivolous spending? Okay, maybe it's buying coffees or, you know, loaded teas or something like that. So I'm going to set a time she frame. She has a loaded tea sitting yeah, in I, front of her. I do. This is the first one I've had in like months. <laughs> it's because you've been on a coffee kick. I have been on a coffee kick. But so we'll say time frame. I want to choose up until December 1, I want to try and not spend as much on caffeine and just, you know, 
drink what caffeine's available to me, not cut out caffeine, because I'm thinking that extra money, then at the end of each week, I can save that. So okay, that's how I'm going to start tracking it, is every time that I don't buy a coffee or a tea, I'm going to reward myself and like maybe move that money into a different account or something, like act like I was buying that mm. and then stick it somewhere else. It's kind of like girl math. Like, oh, I didn't buy a tea today, so if I buy one tomorrow, it's basically free. Yeah, we are just teasing all these future episodes we're going to do. Mm. <laughs> so make a budget. Oh, there's the B word. Yes. Well, but, I mean, you know, you can't do a financial podcast where you're trying to bring financial, you know, simplify financial uh, matters for the people and not talk about budgets. That's so. true. So before you start to fast, it's important to create a budget so you can track your spending and make sure that you're covering all your essential expenses. That's what we talked about. Pay your mortgage, pay your light bill. Identify your spending triggers. Oh. Oh. What are the things that typically tempt you to overspend? Once you know your spending triggers, you can develop strategies. That'd be an episode too, spending triggers. Yeah. Dateline. Dateline <laughs> is my spending trigger. My wife loves Dateline. It comes on on Friday nights and we sit down to watch Dateline and it just bores me to tears. So I always end up pulling out my phone and shopping. <laughs> so it says, uh, once you know your spending triggers, you can develop strategies to avoid them. For example, if you are tempted to spend money on impulse purchases, you can try to avoid going to the mall or browsing online shopping sites. Yep. So what, do you just like block Amazon from your phone and tell social media to quit giving you pop-up ads? Yeah, you, you would basically have to. I mean, because especially nowadays, I've noticed Facebook has gotten really, really good at, at identifying stuff that I would like to buy. Oh, it's it's ad heavy. Yeah. But I guess in this, you think about back to college days, you know that if you're, you're going to go out and have a, a couple of adult beverages with friends, then you may overindulge and buy food. 50 hot wings for everybody when they come home and spend all the money getting it to show up. And Well, that and Black Friday is coming up, so oh. the ads are really about to start hitting. Mm. They already have. And I think spending triggers is a very interesting thing. Know what you're spending money on and what is the thing that's truly extra. I don't know if this is a trigger, but Apple Pay gets me in trouble a lot. So Feels like easy. free money. It is free money, and I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it is. I think it's gotten easier. I have noticed that if I go online shopping and if I have to go and get my credit card, then I really think about, do I really Same. want this? Mm -hmm. Versus just like clicking and Beep doing boop. Apple Pay. Yep. Beep boop paid done. <laughs> so find free activities. Yeah, find free stuff. I, lo I love it when we give pointers like this because this is so free just stuff. This is so very much kind of just a, oh, really? I should find things that are free to do? <laughs> You can go but walk yes, around the lake I mean, outside. You know, there, there, are, there are activities that you can use to entertain yourself so that you are not spending your money, and uh, that, that would be important. But again, that comes back to completely redefining your relationship with your spending and, and really identifying, like, what are the things that you need to spend money on and what are the things that you just spend money on because you want to? Yeah, I'll say this at the end. Okay. <laughs> Be accountable. Tell a friend, family member, financial advisor that you are doing financial fast. They can help you stay on track and offer support. Mm -hmm. That is, again, kind of with diets. Like if you tell somebody, yeah. hey, I'm trying to hit 10K steps every day, then you've got somebody who can help pester you. I know I've done this for clients that I won't pester them every day, but I'll send them an email every you know week or two and say, hey, how's it going? How's, how's the credit card debt going? How's this going? Then don't expect overnight change. Be realistic. So important. At first, you may feel as if, you know, you're depriving yourself. You're limiting yourself. But after fasting for a while, you'll start to come out of each fast with a renewed appreciation of what money is, its purpose, significance, and the impact on the lives of others. Mm. It is so... Oh, yes, money. Indeed. I yes. just, I picture you having like a conversation <laughs> with money. But it this does boil down, you know, kind of joking, but serious. Your relationship with money is so important. Money t touches every aspect of you. And knowing what your relationship is, how you feel about money. Do you feel like you never have enough? Did you, I, I was talking to somebody the other day and they, they're like, I'm going to treat myself. I like to buy, you know, expensive cowboy boots and I like to have expensive clothes because when I was younger, we could never afford that. And so their relationship is mo with money is they didn't have it when they were younger. So now that they have it, they want to spend it to make up for that past time. So that's their set relationship. Others may have, you know, a giving problem and they constantly are wanting to treat other people and take care of other people, but then they're getting out of line of their personal goals. Welcome to the 
Katie's personal talk part of the <laughs> podcast God. because that is her biggest issue. It is. It, it is a big issue of mine is I hate the awkwardness when you go out to eat of like who's going to pay. and Nobody else is thinking about it but you. You're the only one that, that, that feels like it's awkward. That's so. <laughs> my relationship with money and I know it. And so it's, you know, taking that hap- like I almost need to like internally like slap my own hand when they ask, you know, h- how many, you know, one bill or two. And I'm like. Yeah, and then wait for the other person to say, you know, two, and I'm like, okay, we're doing, we're, we're doing two, we're doing Dutch, it's fine. This is an interesting concept. Uh, the tips for it: be prepared, be realistic, be flexible, be patient, and it's kind of like fasting diets. It works for some people; it doesn't. I think it's an interesting concept. You know, I don't know that I would call it financial fasting, but it's just like, hey, I've got, you know a HELOC bill, or I've got student loans that now have to start being paid. My student loan bill may be, you know, $200. How can I start finding $200 in my every budget? Every single month. Every yeah. month. Where can I find that? You can you can identify stuff that you're spending money on that maybe isn't quite as necessary as, as I mean, like, I hate to say it, but um, one of the big things for me was while our kids were still growing up and in the house, we were on a pretty strict budget. We did not spend a lot of money getting food out to eat and so on and so forth. And one of one of the biggest things that I know about myself is like now, because we spent so long with kids in the house waiting for them to, to grow up and move out, now I'm, I'm like, no, I want Chick-fil-A. So I'm going <laughs> and I'm getting Chick-fil-A and budget be damned. Um, and so obviously that that would be one of the quickest and easiest things that I could cut out if I if I would just stop it. Stop it. Just stop it. People that have the most problem is those that are fortunate enough that they have enough money coming in. They're able to cover all their bills. They're able to spend without thinking. Mm -hmm. That is the most dangerous financial person, honestly, because they're not aware of what they're spending on. And unless they have set a savings discipline, a structure, then they're going to get themselves in a situation where, okay, and this kind of goes back to the rationale episode we did forever ago. If you go, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just go ahead and buy those Aerosmith tickets and, you know, buy that. And then the very next day, it's like, oh, we just got hit with a large insurance increase. And then the next day, it's like a tire blue. And you're like, holy moly. And then those people are now forced to be aware of what they're spending their money on. Mm -hmm. That's a big shock. Yeah. And I feel like there's also a flip side to this fasting. Like I have remembered in the past, I'd go like a week, like, wow, I didn't spend anything. And it go on Amazon or Etsy. And then Friday gets here. I'm like, I'm on Etsy and I'm spending over $200 on stuff because I haven't spent money all week. You Mm. binge. I I, I do it all the time. (laughs) I've done that too before. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I haven't spent anything. My my credit card wasn't used at all this week. So then you just like make up for it, which is not healthy. But yeah, like now my problem is ornaments. I love buying special ornaments and I have already bought too many. I'm like, (laughs) well, maybe I should just wait and buy Christmas presents. Just because I want to jump in on this because I find myself in in a position that I'm not normally in. As an office, every Everybody is doing a Christmas tree for their desk, right? Uh And so I've been shopping for ornaments. I did not realize how expensive Christmas tree ornaments are. Oh, yeah. Man, those things get really expensive. Yeah. Dang. I I was like, oh, I'm going to go buy, you know, a tree's worth of decorations Mm -hmm. so that I can decorate my tree. No, I'm not. That is some high-priced stuff. Walmart has some cute ornaments that aren't too expensive. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I just got off on a no, right you're fine. tangent. No, but I want to go back to what you said, because it's true that, you know, if you sit there and look at it as, okay, normally throughout the week, you would have maybe spent, you know, a hundred bucks on random things like Etsy and stuff like that. But now because you've deprived yourself, then you ended up spending $200 in that week, then you normally would not have spent that much. So again, you have to be realistic with yourself and aware. This may not work for everybody, just like all the fasting diets may not work for everybody. And please don't do any of the ones we recommended at the beginning. We did not recommend any of those. Those are recommended to not do. That list was for amusement purposes only. (laughs) Yes. But um, you've got to know what works for you. And this all kind of goes back to what are your goals? Like, Are you fine with how you're spending or are you wanting to make sure that you are preparing for the future and saving? And and that's why a lot of clients lately I'm finding they're trusting their credit cards and they're trusting um, different softwares like that to generate what they're spending money on. Mm -hmm. 
But the issue is it's not going to separate out Amazon. And so Amazon, you may buy groceries and household products and you may buy clothes and gifts and things like that. And so that's kind of where a lot of this is. It's hard to tell. And even like Costco and Kroger, like, was it beer? Was it food? What did you buy? And so I think that if you're somebody who doesn't like knowing where every single dollar is going every day, you then need to consider a financial fasting or doing a plan of how much do you need to be saving so you can kind of spin within a limit and know these are your parameters. So after you break your fast, it's important to continue to practice good financial habits. I mean, that's with anything. When you do a diet, it's like you can't just go, I'm not eating carbs. And then you just eat all the carbs after you stop. And then you're back to like carbs every meal. Mm -hmm. So set those financial goals, track your spending, budget regularly. By following these tips, you can achieve financial freedom and peace of mind. It's some birds chirping in the background. Yes. <laughs> Peace. So, Nicole, are you going to financially fast? Eh, I don't know. I don't eh. know if it worked for me because, like I said, the benching thing. But yeah. I should try it. I mean, what do I have to lose? Well, like I said, my big point is just anything that you do that makes you more mindful of how you're interacting with just people in general, but with anything that you do habitually um, or any type of spending or behavior that you might want to reflect upon and change possibly. It can't hurt to give it a shot if it brings your attention to things that you... That's like I was having a conversation with somebody the other day about a diet, an actual food diet. And they said, oh, diets are terrible. You you shouldn't do a diet because the, you, you'll just lose the weight, but then you'll just gain it all back. And I was like, well, the thing about any diet that I do, but specifically the Weight Watchers diet... The thing about it is, is you just become more aware of what it is you're putting in your mouth. Yeah. And if you're keeping track of it, then... You think about small changes. Like, yeah. oh, maybe if I don't get the cheese on that, exactly. it changes cheese it. Cheese is this. so huge. Cheese I mean, cheese makes a, just an enormous difference in, in, in my diet. And if, I can, if I'm just conscious of that one item yeah. avoiding going in my mouth, then that by itself can make a big difference. So just be aware, you know, make it a point to to be aware of what you're spending and, and that'll probably be helpful. And I think it would be a good exercise. Like I think I may try and do this. Most people nowadays have their essential bills set up as auto. Mm -hmm. And so maybe if you look at it as, hey, for the next week, I'm going to be really aware of when I'm swiping my card, when Swipe I'm using no swipey. it. Yeah. And so you don't pay attention to the auto drafts that are coming out for different things, but just aware of, oh, okay, well, I just went to Sonic. I just went to the drugstore. I just did this. And so you kind of know every time. And, and I think that's just the awareness. Mm -hmm. Every time you're swiping, all of that. And then, yeah, you may then go, well, screw it. I don't have time to watch this anymore. Let's just go. And I think it does go to behavioral. A lot of people will then have a bad day, and that's when they you had a bad day. They stop their diet. They they binge spend. They you know look it's just at like it. Like treating an addiction. Yeah, if you think about it. One hundred percent. Well, perfect. Well, this is kind of a short and sweet episode. Um, just kind of touching on the subject of financial fasting. Uh, we kind of can bullseye this up. It's maybe something to consider because we know that everybody is very unique and different. Everyone has a different relationship with money. And so maybe it's something to consider trying. And if this time of year doesn't sound great, then it's a great thing to probably throw into your January because we know everybody in January is trying new things mm -hmm. and getting those gym memberships. Maybe, maybe consider fitting it in at some point or at least trying that experiment of being aware of where all the money's going in just a week setting. That's all you have to do. Just pick one week. Anything else you all want to add about financial fasting? Don't do the snake diet. Or the cotton or any, ball or the or air the or diet. any of those. Don't, don't do any of them. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there's the closing bell. You've made it to the end of yet another episode of the Bullcast Podcast. If you liked what you heard and you'd like to hear more, please feel free to go to your favorite subscription service and sign up to have our podcast beam directly to your listening device every single Thursday at noon. If you'd like to find out more about me, 
Katie or Cameron or actually you can't find out anything about Nicole. She's not Soon. on the Bullcast Soon. website. It's so. going to happen. Okay. Uh, but you can go to our website. That's bullcastpodcast.com. We've got our episodes up there so you can click and listen right there on the website. Read about Katie. Read about Cameron. Drop a comment if you want to. Suggest a topic you'd like to hear us talk about or if there's a guest you'd like to hear us have on. Suggest that too and we'll do our darndest to try and get back to you if we need to. Um, if you like pictures, boy, do we have pictures. Our Instagram handle is at Bullcast Podcast, and we still have an X handle. That's at Bullcast Podcast as well. We also have a Facebook page. That's Bullcast The Podcast. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, Nicole, Cameron, Court, and Katie all work at a place called Pickler Wealth Advisors. And if you'd like to find out more about what we do at Pickler Wealth Advisors, what we might be able to do for you... Find out about our amazing team and about our boss, David Pickler. Please feel free to go to that website. That website is picklerwealthadvisors.com. That's advisors with a no. Not an E. Ladies and gentlemen, I have given you everything that you need to go forth and be successful. So for now, I'm Court. I'm Katie. And I'm Nicole. And we're done. <laughs>